Hello, I'm Dr. Tara Palmatier of shrinkformen.com. If you have a question or would like to schedule an appointment with me, you can reach me at shrinkformen at gmail.com. The topic of this video is do borderlines and narcissists get better with age? Short answer, no, but I'll elaborate. So a frequent question in my counseling practice and from website subscribers is do narcissists and borderlines get better with age? Another common question is, what happens when they get old and are no longer attractive? These are understandable questions. The latter is a form of anticipatory schadenfreude. The former is a common part of the grieving process. Specifically, it's a form of bargaining. If things get better after, say, age 55, well, maybe you can endure the next 10 or 15 years, right? Wrong. Well. I mean, you, you can, but things are likely to worsen, not improve. Meanwhile, you'd suffer more abuse and allow yourself to be chipped away at piece by piece until you're an empty husk of your former self. Please don't do that. People don't grow out of personality disorders. If that was going to happen, it would have happened at the developmentally appropriate time during childhood and adolescence. As for getting better with age, that depends upon how one defines better. First, narcissists, borderlines, histrionics, and psychopaths don't get better without psychological treatment. Second, therapy doesn't cure a personality disorder. The best you can hope for is symptom management, meaning the disordered individual will take some accountability for their destructive and pathological behavior and manage the worst of it themselves, not you learning how to not trigger them, they manage it. Even then, therapy doesn't guarantee that, especially if the disordered person uses their diagnosis to abdicate personal responsibility. A common refrain many of my clients with, with wives and husbands who have been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder is, I'm borderline, I can't help the way I am. I didn't ask to be born like this. No, they didn't. But that doesn't mean they aren't responsible for themselves and their behavior, just like everyone else born into this world without developmental delays, brain injuries, or dementia. Catastrophic consequences that would result in life-changing epiphanies for non-disordered people typically do not cause the narcissist or borderline to change. If you'd like to understand more about that, you can, you can watch my video uh, titled, Do Narcissists or Borderlines Hit Rock Bottom? If anything, it teaches these individuals to change tactics and to cover their tracks better. That's, that's consequences. It doesn't change their psychology. For example, a psychopathic mother doesn't want to lose custody of the kids because that would mean losing child support money and the ability to abuse her ex. So she learns to hurt the children in ways that don't leave marks and escalates invisible forms of abuse. Now, I wouldn't call that meaningful or positive change, would you? Narcissists, borderlines, and psychopaths usually change tactics as they age, not because they want to, but out of necessity. For example, the once sexy siren or movie star handsome narcissist reaches the stage where they can no longer seduce others with their appearance. Once that happens, they rely more on ingratiating, kissing other people's butts, flattering them, guilt tripping, shaming, instilling a sense of obligation, and playing the frail helpless victim. And there's an exception to this. If, if it's the it's a wealthy narcissist, they can still attract younger targets willing to play along as long as they're getting money or designer handbags or Mustang convertibles or whatever their currency is. Due to a lack of self-awareness, some narcissists will still play the coquette or Lothario well past their prime. A great place to observe this is on Facebook. For example, you know, the 50, 50 something or older year old woman who's posting multiple daily selfies and her, her minions reply, oh, you haven't changed a day in 20 years. You and your daughter could be sisters. Really? Are you looking at the same photo as me? No. 
when their inappropriate, unwelcome, self-deluding flirtations and overtures fall flat, these narcissists and borderlines will often label the uninterested target as gay, closet case, stuck up, crazy, or, or something equally derogatory. It, it couldn't be that they've possibly lost their charms. So do narcissists and borderlines get better with age? The low functioning ones will often decompensate even more with age to the point that they may require hospitalization. The high functioning ones become better predators, not better people. Let me repeat that. The high functioning ones become better predators, not better people. Adult children of narcissists and borderlines understand this all too well. Well into their senior years, they still get up to their old tricks. They triangulate. They find enablers, minions, and flying monkeys. They take pleasure in hurting people. They lie, they scheme, they manipulate, they control, they lash out, they smear, they gaslight, they play the victim, they hold grudges, and they remain every bit as self-absorbed and selfish as they ever were. So now I, I'd like to present a case study to illustrate what I'm, what I'm trying to explain to you. Mitzi Ann Merriweather, my 81-year-old neighbor. Mitzi Ann Merriweather is not her real name, of course. Her real name is straight out of a Jacqueline Suzanne novel. I wish I could share it, but I won't. You'd think I was making it up if I did, but you'd be wrong. My neighborhood is composed primarily of retirees and summer and weekend people. I'm the middle-aged whippersnapper on the road. Before meeting Mitzi Ann, other neighbors warned me about her. The phrase piece of work was used repeatedly with good reason. They explained Mitzi Ann recruits people to do things for her like picking up her groceries, taking her to restaurants, moving furniture, doing yard work and construction projects. Also, they warned me that she would try to sell low quality antiques at inflated prices and find other ways to make money off of me if she could. Her second husband of many years died uh, probably a few months after I had arrived to the neighborhood. And I, I met Mitzi Ann. Sorry. I met, maybe Mitzi Ann is at the door. Shh. I met Mitzi Ann about six months after his passing. From all accounts, her second husband was an incredibly kind and generous man. My first encounter with Mitzi Ann was memorable, even with my neighbors having warned me. She definitely lived up to her reputation. As I spent more time socializing with her, I realized I had a real life answer to clients' questions, particularly, do narcissists get better with age? And here are my observations. And I've, I've divided this into to categories. So the first one is minion enabler, flying monkey, and narcissistic supply recruitment. It was a misty 6 a.m. dog walk one summer morning when Mitzi Ann Merriweather suddenly appeared on the road en route to her newspaper box. She was in a semi-sheer nightgown, sans bra. Two words, gravity plus time, and I could see it. I blinked my eyes in case I was having a caffeine deprivation hallucination. I was not. She approached me and introduced herself, inquiring, don't you live in the so-and-so house? This is how she sounds, by the way. Before I could answer, she continued, do you know what Linda said to me? I don't know, who's Linda? Beaming, Miss Ann replied, Linda delivers my paper. She's just the nicest person. Do you know what she told me? I, I have no idea. Linda told me if there's ever anything I need, any time of day, I can call her. Isn't that nice? Can I have your phone number? Wow. Yeah. Mitzi Ann gets right down to business. The neighbors were not exaggerating. Right out of the gate, Mitzi Ann was attempting to add me to her coterie of minions. Don't get me wrong. I am happy to help people who genuinely require assistance. 
Mitzi Ann is very mobile and still quite capable of doing for herself. But why do for yourself when you can get others to do for you? Narcissist credo number 37. Now, there's a certain kind of narcissist who relishes manipulating. There's a certain kind of narcissist. Oh, good Lord. They were sleeping before this. There's a certain kind of narcissist who relishes manipulating others into doing things for them that they can do for themselves. They brag about all the work and favors they exploit from their minions, enablers, and flying monkeys. The more they get others to do for them, the more special they feel. And they will actually boast and gloat about manipulating and exploiting others. Facebook is, is this is a good place. You can, excuse me, you can also observe this on Facebook quite a, quite a, bu quite a bunch if you, if you care to look for it. Given how fast Mitzi Ann went from nice to meet you to nice people don't have boundaries with me, aren't you a nice person to give me your number so you can start doing stuff for me because you're a nice person, right? My guess is she's been doing this shtick for decades. Since I have boundaries and no emotional stake in Mitzi Ann, it was actually amusing for me to observe this. Mitzi Ann was on a manhunt less than a year after becoming a widow. And again, when you're in your 80s, time is at a premium. Her first prospect was the owner of a regional bank with a terminally ill wife. That was a problem. The terminally ill wife could linger. She also said the banker was too smart. Translation, too difficult for Mitzi Ann to manipulate. She was quite clear about how much she didn't like that. Less than a month later, she found her next prospect, a man 17 years her junior. That's not a cougar situation, it's a saber-toothed tiger situation. This, this guy, is, he's, he's, from what I observed, he's a, a lovely man and very, very handy. In less than two months, she had him cutting down trees on her property, doing home repairs and other construction projects. She was also redecorating his home with antiques that she would find and he would pay for. He told her he wasn't comfortable with that, but Mitzi Ann is not one to be easily deterred. He's a widower as well and was his wife's caregiver before she died after a long debilitating illness. Now, I mentioned this because what you see here is a caregiver and a taker. Narcissists and codependents are magnets for one another. If there are 100 people in the room, the narcissist and the codependent will find each other. Age is irrelevant. The next category where the narcissist does not change is self-absorption. Narcissists cannot stand not being the center of attention no matter how young or old they are. And Mitzi Ann is no exception to this. When we were still socializing, Sometimes I would time how long it took her to interrupt conversations that weren't focused on her about how wonderful she is. And, and she would, with a, a totally random non sequitur, uh, bring up something about herself. The longest I observed her go without interrupting when the, the topic of conversation wasn't her was about three minutes and 42 seconds. If the rest of the group was talking about politics, she would tell a story about how a, a politician who shall not be named um, bought her old family farm. This is true. I have no idea. If we were all laughing about different movies or TV shows, she would, out of nowhere, start talking about the cocktail dresses she sewed for herself and all of the rich suitors that she had. If the rest of my neighbors were talking about an upcoming vacation, she would jump in and talk about the giant fishing cruiser her second husband bought, how she decorated it, and the trips they took on it. We were discussing development plans in the neighborhood. She would proudly tell the story of how she targeted and manipulated herself into her second marriage. That poor guy didn't know what hit him. She's proud of this and gives relationship advice to me, or she was giving me relationship advice at the time, that I needed to learn how to be, and I quote, conniving to get a man. And this answers another often asked questions, excuse me, question. Yes, sometimes narcissists are very aware of what they're doing. She knew she was conniving. She was proud of it. 
mean girl behavior or mean boy behavior. This is another thing narcissists and borderlines often do not grow out of. Many female narcissists started out as mean girls. They engage in one upsmanship, putting down their peers in order to make themselves feel better. When I met Mitzi Ann, we were both single. She'd bemoan whether or not she'd ever have another man in her life. This was a, a frequent topic of, of conversation for her. To make her feel better, I'd tease her and say that she'd probably find herself a boyfriend before I did, and bless her heart, she did. Prior to snagging her younger man, she would invite me over quite a bit for dinner or martinis because, hey, even though I was just a woman and wasn't male attention, it was better than no attention at all. I knew something was up when I didn't hear from her for about six weeks. When she resurfaced, she invited me over for cocktails to tell me all about the new man, how smart, how fun and handy he is, and how they have the most amazing time together and how amazing the sex was. And I, I really didn't want to know about that. Bad mental image. <clears throat> Sorry. As I, I was leaving her place, I told her how happy I was for her. She put her hand on mine, looked me in the eyes and said, I hope you don't think I invited you over to flaunt my new relationship at you because you're still single and don't have anyone. Well, not until you said so, Mitzi Ann. 81 going on 13. Another category where narcissists do not change. Hey, hey, go away. Are, uh, is in, in their damsel in distress shtick their death stare, triangulation, attention seeking, drama diffusion and projection. None of, none of that stops or, or lessens with age, okay? Many female narcissists and borderlines seduce their victims. Let's sit on the toy. Many female narcissists and borderlines seduce their victims by playing the damsel in distress. This is kryptonite for people pleasing codependent men and women who want to play the hero or rescuer. To be fair, there are also male narcissists and borderlines who like to play the dude in distress, and I have dated more than one of them in years past. Sorry, again, another flashback. Um, this doesn't change with the passing of time. Eventually, Mitzi Ann invited me over to meet new man and four martinis on the deck. I asked the gentleman about himself, his career, his moose hunting trips, and other interests. Mitzi Ann interrupted frequently with Mitzi Ann centric non sequitur, including one that was a real doozy. In fact, it was a fiver, meaning five narcissists, excuse me, five narcissist moves in one. So out of nowhere, I think we were talking about his time in Vietnam. Mitzi Ann brings up, do you know what, insert the name of the regional bank over, owner that I never met, told me to tell new man, Banker told me to tell new man that I'm not a wuss and not to treat me like one. Before I could stop myself, I choked and snorted martini out of my nose, vodka stings, and said, you, a wuss? That's the last word I'd use to describe you. You're the puppet master. It was my second martini. New man laughed and added, yeah, that was a three hour conversation that night. If looks could kill, I would have been six feet under. Mitzi Ann gave me the narcissist death stare. Anyone who's been in a relationship with a narcissist is familiar with the death stare. You typically get it when you speak the truth about the narcissist. Frankly, I'm more worried about new man being steamrolled than Mitzi Ann. In addition to the death stare, there were four other narc phenomena in that non sequiturious conversation she started. First, the wuss thing was Mitzi Ann's attempt to damsel. Although at 81, it would be more accurate to call it a dowager in distress move. Second, by saying it was the banker warning her about new man taking advantage of her, she was creating a triangle. In other words, victim, persecutor, and rescuer. Sorry, my throat is bothering me. Third, she manufactured a problem that doesn't exist, and he spent three hours reassuring her, attention-seeking. Fourth, 
if anyone needs to have boundaries and not be a wuss, it's the new man. Mitzi Ann was projecting. If you've any lingering doubts about narcissists, borderlines, or psychopaths changing or improving with age, doubt no more. But if you do still have doubts, just visit some support forums for adult children of narcissists and borderlines. They're still scheming, still sniping, still abusing, still manipulating, and still crazy after all these years. Or you can flush another 5, 10, 15, or 20 years of your life away. The choice is yours. Um, epilogue, Mitzian has not invited me over for martinis since I called her the puppet master when she was claiming that she was a wuss, which frankly is fine by me. Um, also to anyone who's curious, uh, Mitzi Ann has three adult children. Um, one is uh, she was able to do well professionally and is retired now, but never married and is an incredibly angry person. Uh, the middle daughter uh, is an alcoholic diagnosed with both bipolar disorder and borderline personality disorder in her life is an absolute chaotic train wreck. And her youngest child, the son, is absolutely positively the sweetest, nicest codependent doormat you would ever want to meet. Take that for what it's worth. Thank you for watching. Again, this is Tara, Dr. Tara Palmatier. You can find me at my website, shrinkformen.com. If you have a question or would like to schedule an appointment with me, my email is shrinkformen at gmail.com. Have a good day.